hi guys welcome to gloria ej's youtube channel welcome back if you are an og today we will be having another guest on our japa series and our guest for today is nobody other than mr anthony you guys are going to see him right over here anthony moved from china to australia a really swell conversation together i'm sure you guys are really interested in you know the information that he has to share so all you have to do as usual is give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed if you're not subscribed now so you don't miss the future videos that's it keep on watching welcome to another episode of the japa series and today i have another very interesting guest who has graciously um you know decided to come and you know tell us about some of his experiences having relocated from china i'm gonna let him introduce himself as usual and you know we'll flow you guys already know how we do it so hi anthony can you, hey how you going please just can you introduce yeah. yourself yeah yeah my name is anthony i am currently living in australia i lived in china for two years um doing a master's degree now I permanently live and work in Australia as a web developer. Oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Anthony and I are really, you know, we know each other from way back, you know, all the way from Confucius, Nigeria. We studied Chinese together in Confucius. And so we go way back. That's all I want to say, okay? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We studied Chinese in Nigeria. It's pretty fun, fun times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really Okay, so yeah. I think just before we go into the questions, I'll just like to, it's like an icebreaker, okay? Just an icebreaker question mm. of would you rather. So I want to know, would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma for a decade? <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather do? None. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to pick one. Because no, no, no. I, I doubt anything, like, because I'm a very good boy, so I don't think I would ever do anything that would warrant me going to jail for five years. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you're not a good boy, yeah. but I'm just saying, if you let you choose between going to jail for five years and being in coma for 10 years, of course, you wake up after the coma. Which one do you think you might bear? If it was up to me to choose, I wouldn't choose any. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. that's a simple answer. They're both equally <laughs> terrible. <laughs> okay, so another one. Since you didn't choose anyone for this question, I'll ask you another one. Would you rather lose all your memories or lose your sight? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, the first one. You rather <laughs> lose memories, I just, right? I just, I can just um regain those memories, but my make new ones. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So um now, Anthony, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. First things first. How long were you in China? Although I think you already mentioned it, right? Yeah, I was there for two years. So I arrived in China in November 2022, 2020, 2019. Wow, it's been that long. 2019. <laughs> I arrived in. China, November 2019, and I left um, um, January 2022, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so, you, so that's two years and a few months. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you mentioned that you did a master's program while you were in China. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was your study experience like? What was your experience doing your master's in China like? So, um. I was, I was quite unfortunate because when I arrived in China, it was before the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So I only got to experience China for a month or two before everything went um, yeah. really strange. So um, my experience was lockdowns, um, not much freedom. So <laughs> I can That's imagine. pretty much it. Like, mm. I didn't get the opportunity to like travel a lot and stuff. So I spent most of it just in my... Um, at first, I lived in the school dormitory. Then I moved outside and rented an apartment. Yeah. 
Okay, but um, when it like academic wise, like when it has to be like class, mm-hmm. did like what was the experience like? Because you you studied in Nigeria, right, for your bachelor's, and then you yeah in China. What what kind of experience mm-hmm. do you think that might be different from your typical experience studying in Nigeria? I I think there are a lot of similarities between um Chinese education system and Nigeria because in China. Um, they have a system where the teacher speaks and every the students listen. The, it's mm-hmm. not very like interactive and yeah. there isn't like a lot of room for critical thinking and stuff, which is very yeah. similar to the Nigerian system. Um, also, a lot of classes were online because of the pandemic. Um, the, the, thing I, the thing I like about um, China, China is they have really good facilities. Like whenever we got the opportunity to go into the classroom, um they had like really nice modern facilities and um some of the teachers were really nice as well they would like take time to answer the foreigners questions because we usually like lost in the class <laughs> um, the chinese students they always seem to be um um ahead of us so we're always playing catch up basically, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, honestly, I can totally relate, totally. After two years, you know, you you finally decided, okay, that's it, I'm leaving China. So I just want to know, why did you decide to leave China? Because I know for a lot of people, you know, that study in China, they usually just go on to do maybe a PhD or, you know, get a job in China. So why didn't you consider Mm. furthering your studies or getting a job in China? Why did you decide to leave? Yeah. So um, while I was in China, you know, in China, you're not really allowed to work as an international student. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So when my study was like coming to an end, I, I, I know myself, I know I, I don't really have the interest to do a PhD. <laughs> so um, I was exploring like work opportunities. And um, at the time, it was like extremely difficult to get a work visa in China. And Australia seemed like a better option. So I decided to come over here. Okay. So you said Australia seemed like a better option. Um, is that why you mm-hmm. feel like, why exactly did you choose Australia? Was it the only option you had or what, what were your reasons for, mm. yeah? Yeah. So um, Australia wasn't my only option. Like I had, I have an uncle here, like, my dad's cousin is here. I also have some family in the US and Germany. But um, I didn't want to go to Germany because I have to learn another language. Uh, I just couldn't deal with that. Yeah. Uh, if I went to the US, um, there are a lot of not very good news about the US um, yeah. concerning like security and stuff. So mm-hmm. I did a lot of research and Australia was like safe, very good economy, good future prospects. So like, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I chose to come to Australia because it was like the best option. Canada was also another choice, but Canada is cold. Australia is usually not cold. Like even though we're in winter now, the weather is like 15 degrees, <laughs> Okay. which is nothing so, compared to like, yeah. yeah, other countries. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, good weather, good econo- um, economy, very good country to immigrate to in terms of like, you know, you can live here, can call this place home. Yeah. Good job opportunities. The and the unemployment rate is like two percent at the moment. I think even less. So, yeah, wow. Australia is like yeah, it's a really good um, place to live. Okay, okay, Anthony, you're doing great so far. Thank you so so much. Now I just mm. want to know, um, what was the process of relocating to Australia like? What was the? Did you get like? Yeah. Um, was this through a study route or work route or how did you mm-hmm. locate to Australia? Yeah, so um, it's actually a funny um, story because I actually didn't, I didn't like put a lot of like, you know, hope into it. I was just like, oh, okay, let me just try it and see how it's going to be. Um, so at first I applied for a tourist visa. Okay. Um, I applied for a tourist visa. It was a 12 month tourist visa. And usually when you get a 12 month tourist visa, you're supposed to stay in the country for three months. Then you have to leave and come back again. You can only stay um, at three months at a stretch. At the point. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So when I got the visa, I came in and I was here for like two months. Then I decided to reapply for another visa. So I applied for a family visa. 
And family visas are like pretty much like permanent residency visa. Like you get to live in Australia as a permanent resident and eventually you can apply for citizenship. So I applied for that and I was granted. So pretty much I, right now I'm pretty much like a permanent resident in Australia. So yeah, that was the, that was the route I took. So I applied for a tourist visa first, then I applied for a family visa. Hold on, uh, the family visa, like, how? What, what's what's the application like? Like, fam, who's family? Uh, like, in, my <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Your uncle who was there? No, 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 no. So my partner, like my yeah. my partner, is Australian. Okay. So if you um if you're in a relationship with an Australian citizen, it's pretty okay. much a family visa. Oh. So okay. when you um apply for that, you have to provide um some proof to you know um support your case like okay. joint bank account um some other they have so many um factors they have to consider and it's a it's a pretty expensive visa it's like eight thousand dollars to apply for it wow but yeah 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 so eight thousand dollars for the application and it takes um, a while to process but i was lucky enough mine was processed in a few months so yeah that, wow. that was the journey yeah so okay so for the for the tourist visa that you applied first to get into australia did you apply for that mm -hmm. in china or did you have to go to nigeria yeah so that's the funny thing i was extremely lucky um i applied during the pandemic so mm -hmm. the australian embassy was closed and um, you know usually for a tourist visa you have to do biometrics like they will take your fingerprints and all those stuff yeah. But because the Australian embassy in China was closed um, and also it was like dead, it was one of the requirements I had to submit. So I emailed the Australian immigration <laughs> and told them I can't submit that document because of the pandemic and they waived it for me. Wow. So yeah, yeah. If, if not, that would, it would it have been really difficult <laughs> to, <Wow>. do, <laughs> to do that. Yeah, yeah. So aside from the biometrics, what else did you do? Did you have to go to maybe Shanghai or Beijing? Did you have to have an intern? Uh, every, everything was online. Everything was online. <laughs> yeah, so um, I applied for it online. But mm -hmm. before I was granted the visa, someone called me. And the funny thing is um, when someone called me, I was like at the train station. So I <laughs> saw this call. They usually call from like a block number. So you don't call them back. But like, oh, okay. why is someone calling me from a private number? I couldn't see the phone number. At first, I didn't want to pick up, but like, whatever, I'll just pick up. So um, I picked the call and the person was like, um, hello, is this Anthony? I'm like, yeah. So like, this is the Australian immigration. Like, yeah, um, we heard you, you apply for a visa. You want to go to Australia? Like, yeah. So like, why do you want to go to Australia? So I told them my reasons. Um, they asked me like, what, are, what do I plan to do after my tourist visa? Like, I'll just see how it goes. Like, that's one thing you need to know about visas. Always be truthful. Don't lie because they, I don't know. They always know. <laughs> they always know your intention. Yeah. Um, I told them the truth. I was like, I'll see how it goes. I could, you know, um, go back to Nigeria or go back to China or even like reapply for the visa. I told them mm. before I even went. Um, so they asked me, why would I want to reapply? I told them I have family there. My uncle is there. Also, my partner is an Australian citizen. I'd like to see a family. Um, all of that stuff. Um, yeah, so immediately so after the call... This was over the phone? Over the phone, yeah. Immediately after the call, in 30 minutes, they granted me the visa. In 30 minutes. Wow. And this was this was just 10 days. I applied for the visa 10 days before that call. And they granted wow. the visa. Yeah, so it was just 10 days. The whole process was just 10 days. Yeah. And yes. another thing you should know about Australian, Australian tourist visas they usually put a condition on the visa. So okay. some people might have a, a condition. I forgot what it's called. It's, a, it's called a no further stay condition. So if you have that condition on your visa, it means you can't apply for any other visa while you're in Australia. But I didn't have that condition, so I could reapply. It could be because I told them <laughs> uh, in the interview yeah. that I might reapply. So that's why I say always be truthful. If I had lied and say I wouldn't reapply, they could put that condition. Yeah. So, so yeah. So like, tell them the truth. Tell them your intentions, and then it's up to them to yeah, okay. know how they'll grant you the visa. Yeah. Wow. Twelve months, by the way, that's a lot of time for a tourist visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, depends. Some people get three months, six months, or twelve months. Oh, I think for for most countries, if it's China, I think China you cannot get at most six months a time. Yeah, some countries are different. The the, the US yeah. grants ten years, so. <laughs> but terms visa. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't stay for 10 years, of course. Who will be sorry so to stay for 10 years? <laughs> it's like you can just come back without having to reapply. But oh, okay. Of course, it also de depends the co the passport you have. Not all passports are going to... Oh, okay, yeah, I can get that, such a long um, time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, eventually you, you got to Australia, then you reapplied for a family visa. And now I just want yeah. to know, um, how long have you been in Australia now? So now it's like a year and six months. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. how I arrived on the mm -hmm. 30, I think 30th of January, 2022. So yeah. Okay. yeah 2022. Much yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how has life yeah. been so far in Australia? Life has been really good. Um, really, really good. Like work is really good. Like um, one thing I like about Australia is people are really friendly like sometimes even a bit too friendly like you could be walking down the street maybe you're drinking like a beer and someone can just like start chatting to you like about the weather and before you know you'll be talking to them for like an hour <laughs> so it's wow. like yeah it's just a it's just a really chill laid-back lifestyle like even mm -hmm. with work work is usually not too stressful like and everyone is friendly um the um, environment is nice. Um, everyone is nice. So it's like, yeah, it's just a really good place to live, basically. Cool. Um, yeah. And and <laughs> another thing, Australia pays one of the highest minimum wage in the world. So it's a very good place to work. No matter okay. what job you do, you, you know you're going to get paid well. And there are jobs available for even foreigners to apply for. Is it very difficult getting a job? So, um, well, if you're applying from outside Australia, it's pretty difficult. The reason is because they have very high requirements on like Canada. Um, Canada has like, you know, express entry visas where you can just apply and become a permanent resident. Australia doesn't really have that. Like you have to be really high skilled, like at least three years experience in a certain field. Mm -hmm. Then you have to find a company willing to sponsor you to come into the to come to the country yeah. um so that's that's the problem with australia they really want like really high skill high, like, skilled, um, yeah. high quality immigrants but um if you manage to come in it's gonna be one of the best experiences like there are lots of people coming here like nurses from the uk come here because they pay them ex extremely well here that's and there, there, there are lots of people from the uk here <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the UK yeah, is overcrowded yeah. as, as it is, so they might as well come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Australia pays them really well, so yeah. But yeah, um, the, that's the only issue. It's just um, the work visas, um, they have really high standards. So the easiest way for most people, I'll say like, um, I don't know, I'm just saying these figures, I don't know how accurate it is, but I think like maybe 60 to 70% of immigrants in Australia came through like student visas. So it's like, yeah. Mm, I think that's I think one of that's prominent ways, yeah. Yeah, I think that's also like the same for like most countries of the world. Like the study route is usually yeah. the easiest. Yeah, yeah, it's the easiest. Okay, Anthony, I just wanted to tell me a little bit about you know you said you're currently working as a web developer. What master? What mm -hmm. did you do in China? What was your master's in? Does your job currently have anything to do with your master's or your BSc program? If not, how mm. do you how do you switch? Because I know it's like tech now. How do you switch into tech, or have you always yeah, been in yeah. tech? What what what's that like? So my master's in China was in teaching Chinese as a second language. Um, yeah, after that, I came to Australia. I, tr I tried giving teaching a try, but I discovered, I quickly discovered it's not really like my passion. I don't really enjoy it. So um, I took a few courses on Udemy. Um, also, like just personally searching online and stuff. Then I um, learned about all the skills I needed to become a web developer. So I was like self teaching. I was like learning on my own for, I think, wow. like for a few months i can't really remember um, how many months but yeah i learned on my own for quite a while 
and I also did some personal projects. I did some internships and yeah, after that, I was able to get my job here as a web developer. So it's just a combination of teaching myself, going for internships. Some of them I didn't even get paid, but <laughs> yeah, I just did it anyway. Yeah, for the knowledge. Getting all yeah. that ex experience, yeah. So yeah, eventually landed me my, my job. And yeah, life has been good since. So what you're saying in essence is you've never really had a tech background from before coming to Australia. Nah. I mean, <laughs> that is crazy. So you literally just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I just taught myself. And it was difficult at the beginning because it's a very competitive job. Like mm -hmm. even this job I applied for, like... You know, after I got after I got accepted and everything, like uh, <laughs> um, I discovered I wasn't the only one um, applying for this job. There were like fifteen other people wow. <laughs> applying for the job, but I was lucky to be the one they accepted. I think maybe it's just because I had more like projects to show and I just showed more enthusiasm for the role. So yeah, yeah the thing is, if you're going for in any country you're going to, if you're going for a job that pays well. <laughs> You 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 will fight yeah. <laughs> before you get there. Yeah, <laughs> because there are also gonna be people that want that job as well. Exactly. So you have to prove why I worth it. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Yeah. Wow. It's really really interesting. And honestly, big ups to you, man. I mean, everybody knows mm. tech is not something very easy. Now coming from someone who mm. never really had anything to do with tech all this while. So kudos to you. A lot of us who studied, you know, this teaching Chinese to speakers of other languages, myself inclusive. And I've been in conversations mm -hmm. where people are like, man, I just wasted two years of my life <laughs> doing this discipline. And it's like, I could have been doing so many other things. But then I guess you are proof that you don't have to dismay or feel like you wasted your time. You can always... No, no. The, the thing is, um, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Like, sure. I don't see it as a waste of time because it... That was a stepping stone to where I am now. Like living in China gave me the the chance to like regroup. Like during the pandemic, I was able to like think, okay, what do I want to do with myself for you know the next 10 years? Like I, I it gave me time to plan. Like I knew, like I at the back of my mind, I knew I'll never be a Chinese teacher. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I I just took it as okay, this is just the time to you know enjoy the student life while I think about what I want to do. And yeah. I've actually always had it at the back of my mind, I would learn tech. In okay. 2020, um, during the pandemic, when like everything was closed, even um, school was closed because it was like the holiday, yeah. I decided to learn Python on my own. But yeah. um, because of school, I, I didn't find the time to balance the two, so I gave it up. But when I came mm -hmm. to Australia, like I had all the time in the world, like yeah. I didn't have any other thing to think of, like, all my time went straight into it. So that I think that's one of the reasons why I was able to like, you know, achieve that. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh so now I just want to put you in your feelings a bit. Um, you talked about mm. China was a stepping stone, you know, for you to eventually rediscover yourself that you know you want to do tech. Yeah. And all. Do you ever miss China? Like, do you ever actually miss China? If yes, what do you miss about China? <laughs> right now um not really because everything yeah. about china i can get here there are so many chinese people here oh yeah <laughs> actually, one of the, i heard yeah they're the, they're the biggest immigrants group in australia so wow. if i want to eat chinese food i can eat chinese food easily um there's chinatown down the road um i have some chinese friends here so I don't really have that. The only thing I'll miss is like friends over there. That's the only thing. But if it's in yeah. terms of the culture or the food or everything, it's readily available here. So I, I'm not really at that phase of missing it yet. Maybe if I'm here for 10 years, I might eventually miss China. I maybe go visit. But for now, like I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting because yeah. I think uh, some other people that I've interviewed, they also usually just say, oh, I miss my friends back in China. And it's yeah. I to think, oh, people should really be missing China, especially uh, for me, for example. I know that one of the things I miss about China is like maybe buying stuff, the convenience of 
online purchasing and things okay, like okay 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 i'll be i'll be i'll be honest the only <laughs> thing i miss is how cheap china is that's the only thing okay life is extremely expensive here like um if you're doing like you know the delivery why am i you yeah. can't do that here unless you want to be broke <laughs> <laughs> really just just one uber delivery is like 30 dollars and it doesn't it doesn't even have to be far away just like down the road 30 dollars for just one uber delivery wow so check that if you're if you're doing it three times a day <laughs> so it's like <laughs> life yeah. is very expensive and it's not as fast as china like if you order stuff on taobao it will take mm -hmm. like two days yeah here it takes a week or two weeks oh. so because there are less people less demand so mm -hmm. it's like most things are going to be slow you know everything's expensive don't even talk about hotels or like accommodation like mm. accommodation would take like maybe say 50 percent of your salary your salary wow it's <laughs> so, crazy so that's the only thing i miss about china like it's just cheap that's cheap the thing. Yeah. yeah yeah i think that's, that's also yeah. and the people it's very synonymous with a lot of my guests like it just seems like mm. the place where you can, even with like a very low salary, or for students actually who yeah. get high pens, it's yeah. even very comfortable. Yeah. And people who have yeah, yeah. left, people who have that bad, they're just like, enjoy it while it lasts. Over here, <laughs> the bills mm. are crazy. Yeah, yeah um, everything you have in China, like the luxuries, you might not see it as a luxury there, but when you leave, you see that it's a luxury, like being yeah. able to order stuff. Mm. every day like in china i didn't cook i didn't cook for those two years i didn't wow. cook at all like every day i was ordering food morning afternoon nights but mm. <laughs> thank god we have china. an african restaurant <laughs> we have an african supermarket okay so every week i'll just go and buy beans yam you know <laughs> the normal stuff Get buy my kids. groceries for the week <laughs> <laughs> nothing like restaurant here or uber ah no <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, so this is actually the final question. Um, I just want to know, is there anything that you feel like you might have done differently, you know, concerning getting mm. to Australia, as well as you know, any advice that you might have for people who want to leave China for Australia or any mm. part of the world? Um, yeah, yeah. So um one mistake I find a lot of people make is they don't plan properly. They don't plan like ahead. Like I planned quite a like a long time before I actually decided to come. Some people don't want they want to travel in, in two two months and they're asking me how to travel. Like, how do you expect to make it in two months? <laughs> the visa <laughs> yeah. can take two months to be granted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, no, you have to plan ahead, like a year, mm -hmm. six months ahead, and save a lot of money while you're in China. Because yeah. By the time you get here and you change that money to Australian dollars, you find out it's not a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> to find a place to stay. <laughs> so it's like save a lot of money. First tip, save a lot of money. Second tip, plan ahead at least six to 12 months ahead. And if you have friends in the country you're trying to go to, you can just like ask them like for some tips on like, you know, how to get rent because finding rent is not just about having money. You yeah. also have to... It's an application you have to apply and then the landlord will um accept because they will have like people to choose from yeah they could deny you so it's like if you don't have any rental history they probably wouldn't give it to you so oh. but if like you know someone helps you like find a good agent that can put in a good word for you that would be good so okay. yeah just having friends in the country you're going to you're going planning to. well and saving saving lots of money yeah okay and um, also concerning, you know, relocating from China to Australia, you have no regrets. Do you feel like you should have left yeah. Australia or? No, I left at the right time. Like I left, at, if, I, if I left before, I probably wouldn't be as lucky because I was able to get around so many rules. Like so many mm -hmm. things I was supposed to apply, submit, I was able to just say, oh, pandemic, I can't submit. But... <laughs> If it wasn't, if the pandemic wasn't there, I would have to submit it. And who knows yeah. how difficult it would be to get it. True. So I think I left at the right time. Right I feel like, time. Yeah, I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> that's really cool. That's really cool, honestly. And I'm very, very happy for you. Yeah. Come to the end of today's video. We want to say a huge thank you once again, Anthony. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time, for sharing with us mm -hmm. about your experiences. I'm sure that this video or this info will be very useful to a lot of people. And you know, there are tons of us who want to join you guys over there, over there. <laughs> Yeah, 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 thank you yeah. so so much appreciate you thank you guys for watching as well please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so that you know it does well and the algorithm pushes it out to other viewers as well we already have a couple of videos concerning relocating from china to other countries on the channel so you can also go ahead and check them out so subscribe to the channel you know so you can stay tuned for our future videos and hopefully, hopefully, I will catch you guys in the next episode. For now, bye, guys. Bye, Anthony. Bye-bye.